Hi guys. I have lost basically all of the footage except for like one clip over the last week of my vlogs. Like one clip won't open. <laughs> the one clip that I have is of me talking to you guys at one o'clock in the morning and you can clearly see that I shouldn't have been talking to you at one o'clock in the morning. Basically, I'm going to film my entire week's worth of clips right here, right now, because I have nothing else for you. It's either that or not upload a weekly vlog. So hopefully I can get this done and it's not super horrible. It's not going to be uploaded Wednesday morning. This is Tuesday night. I've been trying all day to get this stuff done. I'll upload it tomorrow night. Sorry about the late upload, but this is my life right now. I finished the, this is the wrong book. This is the eye of the world. Let me go get the great hunt. Here's the great hunt. I liked it. I loved it a lot more than I liked the eye of the world. I give, I think I gave the eye of the world four out of five stars. I like this more, but it's not like a five star read. But it, I mean, if I were to compare the eye of the world to this, I would have to drop my eye of the world to three stars if I didn't do that and then put this at four stars. This was a lot more entertaining. I fell in love with the Aes Sedai world. That was the most fascinating thing to me about this book. What the different colors mean, how the different colors have their different personalities, all about the Aes Sedai. My favorite, oh, what is her name? I have it back here. My favorite Aes Sedai is Varen. I love her so much. I am very, very suspicious about Selene and I don't like her <laughs> at all, but I think we're not meant to like her. I have fell in love with Nynaeve in this book. I thought she was pretty annoying in the first book and I couldn't wait to jump to other parts of the story when I read about Nynaeve in the first book, but this book I fell in love with Nynaeve. I want to dig into Heron's story a little bit more. I want to learn about what is really going on with him. He's a character that I think we have been kind of skating around. I'm, well, I mean, it's a 14 book series, so I'm pretty sure we're going to dive into what, what all is going on with him, why he can do what he can do, how that all started. I'm excited to dive more into about Perrin. But yeah, this book I think was far more intense than The Eye of the World, and I am far more engrossed in this story and these characters than I was in the first book. I think this book took the first book and raised it 10 in every way. So yeah, I think, I think I'm a true believer now. So I will be picking up the next book soon, probably at the beginning to like, at, probably at the beginning of next month. I have a few other books that I want to get to, but yeah. I would rate this a 4 out of 5 stars. Done with the Great Hunt. Loved it. Can't wait to get into the next one. I'm being told or I've heard that the, the fourth book is is one of the best books. So, you know, I'll be on book three. So I'm, I'm getting close to that fourth book. I read and finished A Song of Race and Ruined and I really enjoyed it. My favorite parts about this book were the the world, the culture, the history of the culture. I, I don't want to say enjoyed the way because you, you don't enjoy, I don't know, you don't enjoy some of these things, but the way this book had the main character portray her pain because of how tragic her parents have died was, again, I don't want to say enjoyable, but she, she dealt with it in a rebellious, free spirit kind of way. And I felt it was interesting and kind of refreshing to read that personality or that side of dealing with a tragedy instead of wallowing in sorrow and just trying to bring yourself down all the time. The main character, Karina, her father and sister died several years ago 
in a fire. What happened was is now that her older sister died, which now puts her in line to become queen when before she was never meant to be queen. Instead of like embracing this new responsibility, she kind of rebels against the idea of becoming queen and she takes unnecessary risk on her life, but that's kind of in direct response because nobody lets her do anything because they are so nervous about something happening to her because there's no one else to take the throne. So Karina had that kind of personality in building these walls in order to protect herself from the pain from all of the stuff that happened before. Now, our other main character, because this is a dual perspective story, our other main character, Malik, is part of the class of people in this world that are not thought highly of. His people aren't considered anything of value except for workers and helps. And his people also aren't even admitted into the city because these people think that if they admit Malik's people who are Eshron. So if they admit Malik's people who are Eshron from the Eshron mountains, then the city is going to be overrun with Eshron because they're so poor. They're going to take up all the city's resources and all of that, you know, nonsense BS stuff. Malik and his two sisters get false documentation telling, uh, saying that they are from a different place so they can be admitted to the city so that they can find work, so they can send off to some of their relatives to bring them into the city because everything is in dire straits with this family. Unfortunately, in this process, Malik's younger sister gets kidnapped and in order for him to get his younger sister back, he has to kill the princess. He enters these games in order to get close to the princess because every 50 years, the city puts off this festival which they hold these games and then people enter and then the uh, winner of these games gets this Fantastico prize. This year, the Fantastico prize is to marry the princess. So he enters in the games in order to get to the princess in order to stab her. But what he doesn't know is that the queen was assassinated and in order for Karina to resurrect her mother has to have the heart of a king so she makes the prize her hand in marriage to create a king to get the heart of it to, to kill them to get the heart of a king in order for her to be able to resurrect her mother so Basically, they're trying to kill each other. So, but of course, they get close enough to actually have some sort of feelings for each other, which makes this whole killing each other, you know, a difficult task because they actually think they start falling for each other. Like I said before, I loved the history of this book. I kind of wish we got a little bit more of the history, but I was I was satisfied with what we got. I loved the culture. The games, the games were all right. They weren't like the highlight of the story. But I also enjoyed these two characters getting to know each other and then going from them basically trying to see each other as the enemy, non-human, I have to do this for this loved one into, you know, seeing them as a person and then questioning whether they can actually murder the other person and then that whole story arc. That was fun to read. I also really enjoyed Malik. He wasn't your typical character in this type of book. Like, he wasn't excessively handsome, good looking, good at everything. He was extremely insecure, not super strong. All he had that was going for him, he, well, he only had a few things going for him that he was super good at it and he was able to use that to his abilities, but he also had a lot of things not going for him. I enjoyed a not perfect character. I did enjoy this book. I would give it a four to five stars. I can't remember when the second one comes out, but I'm excited to read the second one when it comes out. I can't wait to have these two characters meet again and see what happens after they meet. I started reading a couple weeks ago, a week ago. I can't remember. Outsiders, I'm on page, oops, I'm on page 138. I'm at the part where they are at the movie theaters. I am 100% enjoying this reread. My favorite thing right now is the language. 
the words they use. Like, on this page, he did get boozed up too much. Rumble. Just the language. It's, it's adorable. And so, I know this is, this book is not going to be adorable soon. It's going to make me cry. But... I am going to enjoy it before it starts making me cry. And then I got some places in the Way of Kings. I am at page 80. I'm really far. <laughs> and I've heard from people talking that it is a really intense start and then it just kind of dips down. And I would have to concur. It is really intense to start with, there's a huge intense action battle scene that really kind of has you on the edge of your seat. And then it goes straight into something else and you're just kind of like, wait, what? What happened? And it takes a while to start figuring out what happened. But that is where we are. And I am preparing myself for a long way of not a whole lot of action according to what people say but it's interesting even though this is not super action-packed right now and there's i don't think there's a whole lot of like movement being inside kaladin being inside his head is pretty interesting and i do have to say one thing my favorite phrase so far of the entire book, or of, yeah, so far of this is uh, on page 21. Their stomachs proving to be inferior wineskins. I am going to have to find a way to use this in my daily life somehow because I can't pass that up. Their inferior stomachs, no, I'm wrong. Their stomachs proving to be inferior wineskins. Yep, that's, that, that's a thing. That's going to be it. Okay, so that is my weekly update for today. Like, subscribe. Let me know what, about what you think about, like, the inferior wineskin. So your stomach says inferior wineskin. He was talking about how they can't hold your their liquor. Like, that is the most inventive way that I have read about somebody saying you can't hold your liquor. I don't think I'm going to be able to say that drunk, but I sure as hell am going to try the next time I am drunk or drinking or buzzed or whatever. I don't get drunk often. So let me know what you think about that. Are you reading The Way of Kings or The Stormlight Archive in preparation of November when the fourth book comes out? What are you reading this week? If you want to help me pick my TBR for next month, comment below the books you want me to read. As of right now, I'm reading The Way of Kings. The Outsiders. I still have to read the other book. I can't remember what its name is right now. I will probably pick that up after this. Like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what's going on with you guys. I want to know what you're reading and what you plan to read or just how are you? How are you doing? How's your week going? Bye.